I'm reading from Matthew chapter 1. Verse 1 says, This is the scroll of the lineage and the birth of Jesus, the anointed one, the son of David, and descendant of Abraham. I'm going to go down to verse 3. And it says, Judah and Tamar had twin sons, Perez and Zerah. Perez had a son named Hezron, who had a son named Ram. I'm going to go on to verse 5 and 6. Who had a son named Salmon, who, along with Rahab, had a son named Boaz. Boaz and Ruth had a son named Obed, who was the father of Jesse, and Jesse had a son named David, who became king, who was the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, the mother of Jesus, who was called the Anointed One. So from Abraham to David were 14 generations, and from David to the Babylonian captivity, 14 generations, and from the Babylonian captivity to Christ, 14 generations. Well, have any of you ever thought about writing a bestseller? I haven't, but if you were, I don't know whether you'd be thinking for your first chapter, you would opening up, you'd be opening up with a long, long list of names. To be honest, when I picked up Matthew, the book of Matthew, and I've started reading and I start in chapter one, I've often skipped over this first little part because I thought it was a little bit boring. But Matthew did write it, so then there's got to be some gold in there somewhere. And um, as I was just reading through, there actually is some really good stuff to share and for us to take on board. One of the things that I thought of was that actually when he's talking about the whole generations, all those generations, it actually gives us a very, very broad spectrum of people. And it also then unmistakably places Jesus right there. That it also talks very much about to the diversity of people. And, um, and we know that Jesus is definitely about diversity and he's here to reach all mankind. And that reflects in his lineage as well. There's people that come from many different cultures that are represented here. There's, um, there's some that have been moral outcasts. There's some people here that have actually lived quite good, generally quite good lives. There's some that have been politically influential and, um, and quite powerful. And then also there's been some in this lineage that is, um, is not so significant and haven't had a great deal of power or authority. There's some that we've never heard of again. They might have been mentioned here, but we've never heard of them since in the Bible. There's even some in here that were very wealthy. And, um, and then there's some that actually they're, they're, uh, they didn't have a great deal of possessions and wealth, so to speak. So there's also some, <laughs> some that said some and did some really dumb things. And then there's some that have been incredibly wise. There were some women and that was also very countercultural for the time because as they wrote lineages back in those days, they never re referred to the women. It was always just the male line. And here, Matthew has actually thrown out the rule book and he's, he's brought in five women and he's mentioned five women. So that's, that's pretty cool. And I think that's something that reflects Jesus is changing, changing mindsets and changing perspectives all the time. I think also what's quite profound, and I love it, is that God doesn't use ideal people, but he uses actual people. So that they're not perfect, they're just like you and me, really. And that's, I think, quite an outstanding and profound thing about reading through the genealogy. And, you know, I think Jesus is here to reach all the world. The Bible says that he was a friend to sinners. So the good news is, through his incredible grace, Jesus doesn't cancel anyone. Isn't that such a refreshing thought for you and for me? It certainly is for me. Amen.